Okay, good morning. Thank you for joining us for this morning's Works with DW Spectrum webinar. Uh, this morning, we're uh, joined by an analytic partner, a uh, technology partner for DW Spectrum, which is uh, Actuate. And we have, uh, we, have, we have the whole team on from Actuate, but uh, we're going to start off with uh, Sunny. But before we get started, just a couple things about the webinar. Uh, the webinar is being recorded. Uh, it will be posted to our website and our social media. Um, we're using the GoToWebinar interface. Uh, as most of you know, we're, uh, the audience is in mute. Uh, there is a, the ability in GoToWebinar to submit your questions, and we will uh, have some time at the end to kind of ask the, the team here um, any questions that come up during the uh, during the, uh, the presentation here. So, um, and of course we do have more webinars coming up, so by all means, please go to our website and check out the uh, upcoming webinars uh, that are listed there. We've just posted a whole new series of webinars. Anyway, without, uh, without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce Sunny. Sunny, uh, can you hear me all right? Are you there? Yes, I can hear you. Is my audio okay? Your audio is great. All right, great. thank you for joining us this morning. Please yeah, tell us about so uh, about your company and your technology. We'll, we'll, we'll do. Excited to dive in. So everyone, thank you so much for attending the show and for the opportunity to present. So my name is Sunny Tai. I am the co-founder and CEO of an AI company called Actuate. I'm joined here also by Ben Giomek, who is my co-founder and CTO, as well as Dan Kopchik, our VP of sales. So we are a computer vision company and we build AI software that enables existing security cameras to automatically identify public safety threats such as gun threats, intruders, and loiters. And also more recently, we have developed capabilities to identify metrics such as social distance transgressions, masks, and building densities. So just to briefly introduce some of my colleagues here today, my co-founder Ben Giomek was formerly the AI program manager at Microsoft prior to starting actual with me. He actually brings a deep well of data science and AI expertise. And later on during a Q&A, he will help answer any questions in that realm as well as relating to our product. Dan Kopchik brings over two decades of security industry sales experience. And he joined Actuate after a highly successful career as, at, as one of 3SI's top producers. So Dan brings a wealth of knowledge and contextual understanding about how existing security industry technologies can address end user needs. And at the end, you'll also be able to get his email address and phone number um, to, to reach out to him with any additional questions. So just to dive in real quick, as you might imagine, most organizations across the country have security camera coverage. However, most of these cameras are deployed in a very forensic way, which means that footage is only reviewed after an incident has already occurred in an effort to retroactively catch the perpetrator. Even for organizations that actually monitor security camera feeds, either through an internal outsourced security operations center, it's really impossible for a small number of camera analysts to monitor hundreds, or in some cases we've seen thousands of feeds at the same time. And that's even before you account for the human factor of fatigue, boredom, and complacency. So what does that mean? That means that there's a large amount of data that goes unused and uninterpreted. So imagine if you had the ability to interpret this data in real time without breaking a bank for an entire army of camera analysts. You would be able to better respond to a whole host of safety threats and building management challenges, ranging from gun threats and intruders to, as mentioned before, more recently, managing social distancing guidelines and building density metrics. So we can provide you with this capability to turn all of your existing security cameras into smart cameras with no additional hardware required. Our computer vision model samples frame from frames from DW Spectrum and analyzes them to detect threats and, and patterns of human interaction with a high degree of accuracy. And this can provide real-time actionable intelligence, either through real-time alerts or our analytics dashboard. And this, this, inform, this information really enables your security and facilities teams to better respond to immediate threats and building management issues. So just to give you a few examples, in a gun threat incident, this information enables security teams to immediately trigger defensive and evacuation protocols. Or if you have a person come across your building in an unauthorized area, you can immediately deploy a security guard to go challenge the potential intruder instead of guards trying to be everywhere at once and see everything at once. Or also you can identify 
crowding issues at certain times and places within your building. And you can rearrange furniture or redirect traffic to reduce the risk of community spread impacting an end user's business operations. So here are three primary areas where Actuate can help deliver value for your organization. At a high level, Actuate detects immediate security threats and also analyzes how people interact with each other in your spaces and really provides you with actionable data to improve building management and security processes. Let's actually go in reverse and start with the far right, actually, since that's the one area where it's probably the most immediately relevant to the end users. So in any efforts to return to workplace, companies should plan for steps to screen, contain, and trace the virus. However, with over 80% of SARS-CoV-2 carriers being asymptomatic, screening is actually exceptionally difficult, but we can still effectively contain and trace. So with our social distancing AI solution, we can now track areas of the building that are natural congregating spots where people are practicing distancing. So to give you an example, in one of our existing customers, we found that the walls near the main entrance was where people often gather and stop to chat because there's a ledge to sit on. So the facilities team put some reminder signs down, they put some physical barriers so people will rem remember to maintain their distance. In the instance of a confirmed case, let's say Jim from marketing begins having symptoms and tests positive. We can immediately pull all detective frames of prolonged gathering within a specific time and location parameter. So you and the facilities team can identify everyone that Jim has touched so you can ask those employees to go and get tested and isolate if necessary. Other capabilities bring to the table include mass detection. So for example, if you have somebody, if you have a marketing department with 40% mass compliance, while the IT department is at 80% mass compliance, maybe one of the things that an HR department can do is use positive reinforcements, implement a leaderboard for mass compliance by department with the leading department getting a free pizza party or everybody getting a gift card. On the building management side, we provide people flow analytics and crowd detection. So you'll be able to generate a heat map of building density down to square foot level of precision. And this will be able to help you manage traffic flow and better understand where people are throughout the building and really understand where people, where people are and, and when. So this is really especially useful as an example in those staggered return to work plans. A lot of times we've heard from our existing customers that they're gonna do an A team, B team plan with the A team coming in, Mondays and Tuesdays and B team coming in Wednesdays and Thursdays. But if you think about it, even if your building is running at 50% capacity, it can be just as risk, as much at risk as a building running at 100% capacity if most of these employees are working the same section of the building. So these are analytics that will help you manage those decisions. Threat detection on our far left side is the product that we initially started with. And it's a, it's a solution that really identifies gun threats and intruders with an exceptionally high degree of accuracy. Intruder detection can be especially helpful to reduce the number of hours monitoring security camera footage and also walking these pre-planned and pre-timed patrol routes. Instead, it really enables that incident-driven response by your security team so that they can be at the right place and the right time instead of trying to see everything at once. And these real-time alerts can be delivered by SMS, email, through the alarm mechanism and DW spectrum, and also the the people analytics metrics are provided through our actual analytics dashboard, which I'll go over next. So this is a preview of our analytics dashboard. You'll be able to pull up the kind of people analytics de detection metrics that you will like to look at, whether it's, let's say, people flow, crowd, loitering, social distancing, or mass compliance. You can also filter by parameters such as date, time, camera location, and number of people. So for example, if you want to identify all crowds of more than five people from May 21st to May 28th on the first floor of your building, you'll be able to do just that. We also provide a density map down to a square foot. You can see on the bottom right-hand corner on a specific camera frame, people tend to congregate and loiter on the left side of the entrance where there's a ledge to sit on. So the same example I gave earlier, it's one of our existing customers at low-income housing development. So building management was able to take measures to discourage them from doing so. One thing that's not depicted here is that we can also upload a floor plan if it's provided by, by the end user, and we can map all the cameras to the floor plan to show a density map based off of that. So for more exigent threats, our threat detection platform can send real-time alerts, namely, especially the intruder and gun detection mechanisms. The alerts really come through as a, as a mobile alert, email alert, or through your digital watchdog spectrum alarm mechanism. 
These alerts arrive in less than one second, and you can immediately pull the detection frames of a gun threat or intruder along with the location of the camera. And as mentioned before, if we get a copy of your building's floor plan, we can also map the cameras to a floor plan and show the detections within the floor plan as the situation unfolds in real time. So just to summarize, here are some of the major applications of our technology. For gun detection, we can detect gun threats in real time with an extremely high degree of accuracy and a minimal false alert rate. After testing on several dozen customer deployments, we've actually never failed to identify the weapon within the first five seconds of it being drawn. And a false positive rate we've achieved now is less than one per month for 20 cameras. In fact, with some of our oldest customers, they've actually gone months at a time without getting any false positives. And I'm talking about schools with 50 to 100 cameras with a high level of activity throughout the school year with students and faculty going through the hallways and, and not during summer school. Intruder detection, as I alluded to earlier, really allows your guard force or security team to operate by incident driven response rather than trying to see everything at once. So a good friend of mine is actually a senior executive at Allied Universal. He said that his sales of guard services is actually up 30% year over year. In many cases, the total cost of hiring a guard could easily exceed $100,000. So this will enable guards to really respond to human activity where they're not supposed to be with a false positive rate that is close to zero. Loitering is fairly straightforward. We can detect when people are within the camera frame for a protracted period of time, which can be used for both safety and security purposes. On the safety side, as an example, if you're a school administrator, football practice is over, and student hasn't been picked up by his parents yet for two hours after practice, you probably want to know. With social distancing AI, we can provide your organization with a social distancing score that measures how frequently occupants are congregating in proximity for protracted periods. Then for crowd management, one of our existing customers, low income housing development, as I mentioned before, they, they have issues with crowds. Usually when there's large crowds gathering, they, they, they often, by historical precedent, have issues with destruction of property, vandalism, and so on and so forth. So they want to be alerted whenever there's a large crowd gathering. In terms of retail and people flow analytics, this, as mentioned before, is able to track where people are throughout your, your building and provide density mapping of it and the direction that these people are generally heading. This is especially useful from a retail perspective. So if you have a large mall, you'll be able to measure footfall at specific storefronts and even down to the micro level in, it, in a stores themselves, you'll be able to see which types of products and which shelves that customers are tending, tend to spend the most time around. So our technology and expertise in computer vision have really been proven out in, as mentioned before, several dozen customer deployments. A lot of the customers that we're working with initially started with our gun detection system, but they've also begun adopting some of the other capabilities that we've, we've developed. Um, while only several of them have agreed to be publicly referenceable, as you can see at the top, others have agreed to take private reference calls. So if of interest, I can connect anyone with them so they can provide additional feedback about your experiences working with us. So as you can see here, our customers really range from schools and corporate headquarters to low-income housing and the U.S. Army. So what are we doing with the U.S. Army? Uh, the work that we're doing with the Army Futures Command, we were contracted to develop computer vision technology to automate munition inventory and management. So instead of identifying where weapons are not where they're supposed to be, we're helping the Army ensure that munitions are where they're supposed to be to improve inventory management and to automate it so that soldiers don't have to do this inventory by pen and paper. So our technology is exceptionally accurate, really because of our unique tech stack. The performance of any computer visual model out there is primarily driven by the data set and the underlying algorithm. So as you might imagine, the biggest driver of accuracy is really the data set. So over the past two and a half years or so, we've accumulated over half a million images of real life or replicated security camera scenes, initially from channels such as web scraping and staging, but over the past year or so, we get the lion's share of our training data from actual live customer deployments. Our AI algorithms are also unique. We have incorporated aspects of open source models such as YOLO version 4, faster RCNN, and single shot detector. But what our data science team really did was that they combined the best aspect of these open source frameworks, customized layers of the neural net, so that 
they'll be very, very accurate in identifying small classes, you know, single classes, small objects, such as guns and grainy footage, and also potentially larger objects, such as human beings in, in close proximity to the camera frame. So what this enables us to do is really deliver those world-class accuracy rates, because after all, a computer vision model is only functionally useful if the responding humans are not getting desensitized from alerts due to false positives. So as a software-only solution, implementation is actually fast and easy, and in most instances has a very limited consumption organization's network bandwidth. The only thing that we need for our solution to work is remote access to DW Spectrum, which can take as little as 30 minutes collaboration with the end user's IT department. There's no hardware installations required, which means that we can work with customers anywhere in the world despite any pandemic lockdown restrictions that are in place. The sample images from DW Spectrum will be analyzed in our cloud, and the detection alerts, as mentioned before, can be sent in real time, either through DW Spectrum, SMS, email, or fed into our analytics dashboard. So just to wrap things up, I just want to briefly recap the benefits of adopting a solution like Actuate. Well, first of all, it really helps automate your security camera monitoring. Whether you have an SOC or security operations center or not, Actuate can help deliver real-time intelligence on threat situations and building management issues so that you can make rapid decisions that can protect life and property. It's also super cost-friendly. Uh, director of security at a Bay Area-based corporation actually laughed uh, when I shared pricing with him because we're an order of magnitude less expensive than any other proposal he has received. We're able to do so because of, of our software-based approach. So we're not selling you sensors, smart cameras, GPU boxes. There's no installation costs or maintenance costs. You already have security cameras. We just deploy cutting-edge AI software to make these cameras smart. So one last thing to note is that our technology is privacy conscious and non-intrusive. It's really a piece of feedback that we've heard time and time again from leaders. They really don't want their customers or employees or students to feel like they're entering into a fortified military compound or just being watched the entire time. So our policy is to discard all camera frames other than positive detections every 24 hours. And even for positive detections, we can snap to the end user's corporate po privacy policy on that. As for a social distancing piece, unlike other social distancing solutions, it doesn't require a wearable or intrusive tracking app on your employees' mobile devices. So that's a wrap. And with that said, um, my co-founder, Ben Geomek, who understands the technology better than anyone else in the company, will lead the Q&A session. But either, all three of us can be reached at the information here below. All right, Sonny, thank, thanks for that. Um, and so, yeah, so Ben, we got a, we got a couple of questions. A um, couple of, a couple of the questions that had come in were regards in regards to pricing. Um, yeah. I don't know if you have that slide handy with your get started yeah. program. Um, can, can you, works. can you hear me right now? Just want to double check. Yes. Yes. I Great. Can hear you. Yeah. So, um, our pricing, just because there's so many moving parts, is a little bit complex. Uh, but basically, each of the people detection features that we had mentioned there starts at $5 per camera per month. But we do have very aggressive uh, volume discounts and offer industry standard reseller agreements with better than industry standard support and pre and post sales um, engagement. Okay. So, and how would someone get started? Um, send me and Dan a note. Uh, we have pretty standard reseller agreements, and we're particularly interested in people who have customers who are really excited about this. Um, our priority right now is just getting deployments live. And as I noted, we're a completely white glove service, especially for your first half dozen or dozen customers. And we will collaborate very deeply with you to get those customers onboarded because we're, we're providing solutions that really address what's going on in the world right now. And so our priority is to move fast and we're looking for companies that are willing to move fast with us and we'll give them all the support and margin they need to enable that. Okay. Next questions that have come in, um, Sunny mentioned in terms of the instant alerts back into DW Spectrum, I guess we kind of talk about how, how that's achieved. Um, yeah. From the actuate interface, and then I can pick it up with the spectrum interface if you like. Yeah, absolutely. Right. 
Uh, so we use the standard digital watchdog um, backend SDK slash API. So we're actually triggering alerts in the digital watchdog VMS, how they would be triggered by anything else. So those frames are getting marked, they're showing up on your security guard interface. Um, and it's a very natural integration. And if, if you'd like to say more about what that looks like, that would be fantastic. The interfaces that we showed are, there's two of them. One is the analytics UI. This is not for instant alerts. While some of those metrics do update in real time, a lot of them only, like things like the heat map are updated once an hour. So that's near real time visualization of trends over the past few weeks or the past few hours. So that basically is an extension of your VMS when you wanna start looking at things over time in a much easier to use format. The alert user interface that we, that we showed there is generally for people who either don't have uh, SOC or don't use the mobile application of their VMS. That's kind of a bolt-on if you haven't fully configured your VMS so that your security manager gets the alerts on his phone, we can kind of short circuit mm -hmm. that and send our own UI. So that's not a displacement for the digital watchdog VMS. That's just an extension in case customers for whatever reason haven't fully integrated the digital watchdog platform. Right. And so just to clarify for the audience, because a couple questions coming in on that. So it's basically it's it's coming into the spectrum interface through the rules engine as a generic event um, with some identifiers as part of that. And then all of the actions that are currently available in DW Spectrum, uh, anywhere from popping up the video, moving cameras to presets, um, sending out so you can integrate this with our uh, with our Nightwatch product, so if you want to turn on, uh, you know, our Nightwatch uh, illuminators based on the fact that, you know, a, a weapon was detected or something in an area, um, all of those rules are available in the standard DW Spectrum rules engine that, hey, when, when it actually picks up a, uh, a threat, um, you can have all of the things happening. Uh, I will say in terms of, you know, earlier this week we did a, uh, webinar on the new features that are coming out in our next version 4.1 next month. We did the preview webinar earlier this week. And so uh, a couple of things are going to be available through that upgrade um, that are specific to actuate, which would one would be uh, the Chromium based browser upgrade uh, so that you can bring the actuate interface right into the spectrum interface so that you can put uh, their their cloud dashboard uh, that that Sunny showed uh, inside of the inner inside of the DW Spectrum interface um, would be one, and then the second would be that that rules engine will open up for uh, push notification, so it could push notify to a DW Cloud user uh, an event that's happening or occurring within the system to your mobile device. So uh, it'll ex it'll expand out on that. Yeah, absolutely. That's very comprehensive. The only thing I'll add is that the integrations can even go further than that. If you're sending information from your Spectrum VMS to an alarm monitoring service, or if you have some sort of access management integrated with it, you can also do things like lock doors, send it to a remote monitoring service. Whatever you have integrated with DW Spectrum, you can integrate with Actuate because we're linked in in a very native way. Exactly. So uh, some questions uh, in regards to to uh, well, first question, bandwidth usage of the system? I mean. Yeah, great question. That's one that we often get. Um, and we've spent a large amount of engineering effort to minimize that. So we pull images at a fairly low uh, resolution depending on the environment and frame rate. So we've optimized the system to work effectively at a maximum bandwidth of 50 kilobits per second per camera when motion detection is on top of that, or if it's a simpler scene, we've seen that number go as low as five to 10 kilobits per, per second per camera. And that basically means a hundred camera deployment is less than one person watching Netflix. This is not a major burden on your network. Right, exactly. So, and, and just to clarify, because there was a couple questions, this is a, a cloud-based solution, so there's no hardware on site. Uh, yes. So this, all, so, of, all of, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, but we can either integrate no. through network port <laughs> configuration. If you're an organization that 
already is using dig actually with digital watchdog we find that most of our customers we don't have to do anything except get a login because they already have the system set up for remote access if that's the case literally you just have to make a login for us and we're ready to go if you're a more secure environment that hasn't enabled remote access we use um, fortune 500 grade aes 256 site-to-site -site vpns to link up with your digital watchdog system so this is past security review as you saw with the US Army and with some of the most concerned financial institutions in the Fortune 500. Okay. Um, I think that's all of them. Just double check anybody else out there with any questions, anything we didn't cover. Well, Jason had a question that might not be able to be answered in this uh in this uh, thing, uh, uh, Gilbert is asking, is it strictly internet dependent? So yes, you have to use the cloud. So if there's no internet, it won't work. You can't put a server on someone's site that has no internet, right? Yeah, so we it's, could, that is doable. And we actually have a few partners whose direction we can point you in if that's what you'd like to do. Um, but the reason we do this on the cloud is that we can offer this for a pretty low price. Like a right. 20 camera deployment is going to be a few thousand dollars a year at most. Whereas the hardware that you would need to buy up front to run a 20 camera deployment is going to run you 10 to $20,000. And then there'd be a license on top of that. So if it's at all feasible to do an internet based deployment, it's just a lot cheaper because of the economics we can get by turning on and off servers when we need them and when we don't need them. Right. And, and the other one was um, uh, using, uh, I don't know how you're familiar with uh, Spectrum and DW Cloud. Uh, can they use DW Cloud credentials with, uh, with this or do they have to have a direct uh, login? So not currently, like have to answer. yeah, exactly. So currently we do only use a direct login or rather we just need access to your on-site VMS. I think if there's interest right. in us integrating with DW Cloud, that's really a question for Patrick. That's not a problem from our end. I think that's just a discussion we would have to have with the DW engineering team. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, our, our, our DW Cloud is going to provide that remote connectivity. So, you know, uh, in terms of, like like Ben said, in, uh, when you're, all they need is access to the system. So you can add them as a, as a cloud user uh, and it's gonna make okay. that connection to that site the same way. Uh, so there's really not uh, much in there. So um, Gilbert, it's strictly internet dependent things. Yeah, okay. Internet has to be active. All right, I think that's it. All right. Well, thank well, you all for the um, Great. Yeah, guys, we appreciate you guys coming on and sharing sharing the technology. Like I said, we uh, uh, anybody that uh, that we if we haven't gotten your question, by all means, just uh, put it still put it in the chat there, and we'll get it back uh, across on uh, email. But uh, we'll get the recorded version of this up, and uh, anybody out there, take this uh, this solution for test drive. All right. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much. All right.